Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I just want to give you some extra information on uh, non-K CPU overclocking on LGA1700 motherboards for MSI and Gigabyte motherboards specifically, because I don't really have any great Asus contacts, and uh, ASRock is, like, straight up unreachable for me, so... Um, yeah, anyway, but I did go and, like, ask MSI and Gigabyte what their plans are for non-K overclocking support, and... Uh, the answer I got from MSI is that they can support non-K overclocking on the ITX Unify, the Unify X, the uh, full-size Unify, and the Ace. And you would notice that these are all Z690 boards. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. Uh, technically, also, the Z690 Godlike can support non-K overclocking, but I don't think anybody cares about that one. Um, and if you do care, then, like you're wrong. Anyway, um, so the reason why only these four boards can support non-K overclocking is that for 12th gen non-K overclocking, uh, the motherboard has to have an external clock gen, and MSI, when they were designing their Z690 and, like, B660 motherboards, they only put external clock gens on their sort of high-end overclocking-focused motherboards, because the thing is, if you buy, say, a 12600K, you have a perfectly good uh, BCLK clock gen built directly into the CPU. Like, one of the big feature, like, this is actually like a feature you get when buying an AK CPU is you get a lot of BCLK overclocking headroom, and this has been a feature that Intel has sort of created since Z170. Um, and so, yeah, there's really, like, that's why, like, low-end and mid-range motherboards generally don't have the external clock gen that is necessary to get non-K overclocking working. Anyway, the other thing you need um, is also a BIOS that actually uses that external clock gen to bypass the CPU's internal clock gen, because uh, if you don't have that, basically on a non-K CPU, like, say, a 12, uh, 12400i5, uh, your BCLK, like the internal clock gen, is restricted by Intel to not go above 103 megahertz. So you can run like 102.9 or 102.8. Uh, also, if you set the BCLK a little bit too close to 103 megahertz, then the fact that the BCLK isn't reliably at exactly the same frequency all the time means that it might sometimes just lock up as the frequency slightly, you know, drifts a little bit too close to 103 megahertz. So. Yeah, um, that's that's sort of how non-K overclocking works on LGA 1700 is like if you use the built-in clock gen, you're stuck at less than 103 megahertz. And if you have a external clock gen and the appropriate BIOS, uh, you can sort of run arbitrary amounts of BCLK because you're no longer being restricted by the built-in clock gen that you know, like Intel locks down on the non-K CPUs. On the K chips, that internal clock gen can do, I don't know, I, I actually have no idea. I think I've seen screenshots of, like, even low-end motherboards hitting 180 megahertz BCLK with, like, a 12900K. Because, yeah, like, that built-in clock gen can overclock, which is why Intel's actually, like, blocking it on non-K CPUs. Because they're not supposed to be overclockable. Anyway, um... So MSI has put out BIOSes for the ITX Unify and the Unify X. You can get them on this thread on the HardwareBot forum. I'll hopefully remember to include a link to that down in the description below. There's also Asus and ASRock BIOSes in that thread, and I would assume this thread will get updated as more BIOSes come out. So uh, yeah, if you want to you know, keep track of this, this is a good place to check. Um, anyway, Gigabyte. So Gigabyte's in an even worse situation because they decided to... Like, before this whole non-K overclocking thing became a thing, Gigabyte basically decided that they're putting an external clock gen on the Tachyon and the Aorus Extreme. Um, this board's $900, this board's $550, this one's produced in very limited quantities from what I've heard, and uh, this one, there's, like, it's $900. I don't know why you would care about non-K overclocking on this. It's very similar to, like, non-K overclocking on the Godlike. Kind of pointless. Um... Anyway, the Tachyon's still cool if you're into, like, competitive benchmarking, right? Having the option to bench a modern quad-core is nice. Or even modern dual-core. Um, but yeah, so the Tachyon can do non-KOC and the Extreme can do it. Uh, Gigabyte has so far only released a BIOS for the Tachyon, and I don't know that they'll ever release a BIOS for the Extreme. I, I don't see the point in doing that. 
Like, if you want a good overclocking gigabyte board, get a Tachyon. Like, this li like this board literally isn't bad. Well, I guess if you're going... No, that's just stupid. Don't do that. Just don't. Um, anyway, um, but the neat thing with uh, Gigabyte's Z690 motherboards... Um, because, like when, like, when I asked MSI if they have any, like, further plans for non-K overclocking, they straight up told me, like, aside from the boards that already have the physical capabilities to do it, they're not going to do anything. Uh, Gigabyte has a rather interesting option. So, if you look at a Z690 or a Stachyon, um, this is the external clock gen. It lives in between the PCIe slots, which is kind of a strange place considering that the clock gen now lives on the actual CPU itself. I was really expecting this chip to be somewhere near the CPU socket, but yeah, no, it hangs out in between the PCIe slots. But uh, anyway, so here's the external clock gen on the Tachyon, and this lovely chip is what makes non-K overclocking on the Tachyon possible. Now, if you look at, um, say, my Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Pro DDR4 motherboard, um, yeah. See, Gigabyte did actually design their lower-end Z690 motherboards, not all of them, just some of them, but a lot of them, uh, with the option for an external clock gen. That's, that's what we're looking at right here. Um, somewhere along the, you know, somewhere in the design process, they decided that this wasn't actually, like, useful, which makes sense, because, you know, if you, like, if Asus hadn't figured out how to work around the Intel overclocking restrictions, then there would really be no point in having an external clock gen on a motherboard like the Z690 Aorus Pro DDR4, but, uh, yeah, now that we know that the, the Asus workaround, like, I, I still don't know what the workaround actually is, but you know, the workaround that exists for the non-K overclocking restrictions, uh, Gigabyte does have the option to basically just contact their PCB manufacturer to stop masking over this uh, on their board, like stop masking over <laughs> these components here, and then they just have to start populating these components in production, and we could have, like, low-end Z690 motherboards with non-K overclocking support, because, so obviously this picture is of my uh, Z690 Aorus Pro DDR4, because I don't have any other DDR4 gigabyte motherboards, um, but I know for a fact from some documentation that I have from Gigabyte that even the Z690 Gaming X DDR4 has that padding, because a lot of the PCB is recycled, like, a lot of, like, generally speaking, a lot of motherboard PCB designs are recycled to some extent, so, yeah, the, in between the PCIe slots on this board, you get that same, uh, you, you still get this, um, and so Gigabyte could, with, like, in, like, a month or two, they, they could just start making gaming X's with non-K overclocking support if they really wanted to. Now, I don't know that they want to, um, you know, like, when I, because I asked them about non-K overclocking, and they basically told me, like, yeah, we could do this. Um, they, they didn't say if they will, so, yeah, um, that's kind of that. Obviously, if I had my way, <laughs> we'd have non-K overclocking on as many motherboards as possible. Um, but, uh, I don't have that much, like, I, I don't have control over what Gigabyte decides to do. So, yeah, I think it would be really cool if, if they did do it, though. Because, like, it, for them, it really is, like, just tweak the solder mask, and then start populating those components. I guess it might add a little bit of manufacturing cost. Um, but it would be really cool, because as far as I know, the Gaming X is, like, a 200-ish dollar motherboard, and that would actually make this less expensive than, like, the B660 Asus boards with non-K overclocking support. And also, the B660 Asus boards with non-K overclocking are all DDR5 boards, Whereas Gigabyte has a bunch of DDR4 boards where it literally is just a matter of updating the solder mask and then adding some components and you'd have non-K overclocking. Now, again, purely theoretical and I don't know, like, you know, there's not really anything I can do about it, but I think it would be really cool if they just, you know, did like a Gaming X-K or non-K edition or, Revi or Revision 2.0 or something. I guess Intel would be kind of offended if it was really, like, clearly... <laughs> <laughs> clearly in the name of the motherboard hey this this can overclock non-k cpus but yeah if they just released a like a revision something um with the with the clock gen that would just be really really cool in my opinion 
Um, and I think they can do this on most of the ATX boards. I don't think they can do it on the ITX board. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a while since I've since I've checked the documentation for this. So yeah. Anyway, that's all I wanted to tell you in this video is just that uh, basically MSI non KO like MSI has two motherboards that currently support non KOC. Gigabyte has one. Uh, Asus kind of has a lot of them, though they're all DDR5 boards, which admittedly all of these are DDR5 boards. Um, and then ASRock has uh, just one as well, for now at least. Um, I have no idea what ASRock is planning. Um, or, yeah, and as far as I know for Asus, this is it. Like, as, yeah, like I've, I've tried asking about other boards and the response I got was not really very helpful. So I'm guessing this is it um, from Asus. Um, Anyway, yeah, so I don't know, like, go annoy Gigabyte on social media so that they make non-K CPUs or something, non-K overclocking boards, because that would be really neat. Um, yeah, anyway, that's it for the video. Um, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon, there's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store, where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so I'd much appreciate it if you'd, uh, you know, check out the links to uh, both Patreon and Teespring. So, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, and goodbye!